Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 579. A specific type of fish oil can treat inflammation, autoimmune disease, allergies, and arteriosclerosis. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we are going to talk about um, fish oil, and I realize that fish oil has been talked about for years and years in terms of lowering cholesterol, but today I'd like to talk about what kind of fish oil and what kind of oil you should add to your diet in terms of healthy fats that will make you reverse inflammation that you may be experiencing. Inflammation is something that <clears throat> we need in our bodies for short-term things, like inflammation helps us heal. If we get cut, we have inflammation around our cut that bring white cells there and help us heal. It also brings platelets there to heal. But inflammation throughout your life all the time causes you to have abnormal uh, reactions of your tissues, therefore, like platelets. Platelets will then increase and be stickier if you have inflammation. It was meant to heal you, but if you have it all the time, it is going to be used to get your cholesterol out of your blood and stick it to your arteries, which then builds up the plaque and makes the opening of the artery very, very small so that you can't push blood through. That's called arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis. That is not good and it happens with age and age is one of the things that increases our risk of inflammation. So in general, inflammation in our body has a use, but now with our present diet and our present uh, lack of exercise, uh, many of the diseases of aging involve high inflammation. So let's talk about inflammation and what we can do about it. Um, if, you have, if you have inflammation... Uh, that is found on your blood work, you'll have a high CRP level. And that CRP is a sign of in, an inflammatory process going on. Many times I'll find this on a patient and say, so when your blood was drawn a month ago or three weeks ago, did you have a cold? Did you have a sinus infection? Were you, um, did you have an injury? Were you having rehab for some, some reason, like an injury of your, one of your joints? And then if they do have that, that's a normal kind of inflammation, and I wait till we do the next blood draw to see what the CRP is under normal circumstances. But if they say no, then I have to consider that they may have um, an autoimmune disease, or they may have, or they may be obese, because obesity and a lot of fat in your body drives inflammation up, which is why obesity is linked to heart disease. Obesity, it's one of the reasons. Obesity increases inflammation, which increases the fat that sticks to your blood vessels. So it's very important for me and my practice, we want people to be healthy. So one of the things that we do to help people be healthy and to avoid other diseases of aging is to control inflammation. So how do we reverse this issue? Well, weight loss is one, but weight loss is difficult and takes a long time. So the primary um, reason many people become inflamed after the age of 40 is because their testosterone drops. So as their testosterone drops, their inflammation increases. So that is one thing that we, we use to reverse inflammation, and we give testosterone in a non-oral fashion, because that's the only type that will decrease your inflammation, and we give it as a pellet long-term, long lasting, so that we don't have to worry about whether you're taking it or not. It, every day should be s nearly the same blood level, and that will decrease your inflammation somewhat. Um, weight loss, we, we put you on a path toward weight loss. We help you with that. Uh, we try to um, 
to adjust any type of prediabetes so that you don't go down the path of getting diabetes, which increases inflammation. Uh, we do that with diet, exercise, and medication. Another way to, um, to treat inflammation is through aspirin. A daily 81 milligram aspirin decreases the amount of uh, inflammation in your body somewhat so that you don't have the platelets sticking to your blood vessels. So that's one, that's one way to do this. Another way is with a drug called Celebrex, which is a COX-2 inhibitor, and it inhibits the collection of, of uh, inflammation in the tissues or throughout your body. So that's another way with a drug that we can take care of this. We always try to treat any kind of long-standing infection or long-standing joint destruction because if you have if you have a knee or a back or a hip that you're just walking on and you are you walk on it every day that increases the inflammation in that joint and it goes throughout your body. So your whole body is inflamed, not just that joint. So if you have the ability to have your joint repaired or replaced, it behooves you to get that done sooner rather than later. Don't put it off because you're collecting, inflammation is helping you collect plaque and having other things happen. You may even develop an autoimmune disease because of it. You have to control your inflammation. And if it's from a joint, the only thing that's going to make that better is going to be to have the joint repaired or replaced. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is treatment with omega-3 oils, which are fats. So in food, we have fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And we've talked many times about the fact that you need um, half your body weight in grams of protein a day to maintain your, your muscle mass. And if you want to gain muscle mass, you need more than that. Well, today we'll talk about the types of fats that are good for you and the types of fats that aren't good for you. What a, a study that was done by doctors um, at UMKC and uh, University of Missouri um, one of their medical schools. Um, it's a six-year program. They did a study and they found that most people who had um, inflammation throughout their bodies had a diet that had more omega-6 and 9 oils in it uh, and very few or not very much insufficient amounts of omega-3 oils. When we were cave people, we ate a lot of fish, and fish is what keeps, is the best, actually, the best source and the best kind of fat for us other than olive oil. But fish is an omega-3 oil, and that is something that uh, over time and as we become uh, more developed, we have had less and less fish in our diet. Um, om omega-3 oils are the oils that we need to increase. And we need to decrease the omega-6 and 9 oils to uh, prevent in, uh, inflammation. So if you were thinking about um, what is an omega-3 oil, it's a marine fish. Basically, it's a, an ocean fish. Um, the, the one fish that has the very highest uh, amount of omega-3 oils is salmon. So that's your best choice if you want to replenish uh, your omega-3s. You also can find it in halibut, herring, sardines, trout, oysters, mackerel, tuna, and uh, shellfish. So in, differ in differing amounts, you can eat those and actually replenish your omega-3s. So the omega-6 oils are mostly seeds and nuts. And we use a lot of seeds and nuts to keep us from eating a lot of carbs. So often I'll tell people, oh, eat more almonds or eat more cashews. Well. As good as they are in terms of protein and a healthy fat, they're healthier than junk food fat or lard or, or um, animal fat, but they do have to be balanced with your omega-3 oils. So if you're eating a lot of seeds and nuts, which isn't in itself bad for you, then you should be eating a balance of omega-3 oils so that you have more omega-3 in your, in your life. So that would be either taking fish oil or taking, um, or actually eating fish or, or shellfish several times a week at least. And I'm sure that most people don't do that. So this would lower your inflammation. If you already have 
inflammation, if you ache all over, if you have fibromyalgia, if you have autoimmune diseases, if you, every time you get out of bed, you hurt, um, then the things that I talked about with the testosterone and weight loss and um, anti-inflammatory medications, all of those will help, but it's so easy to go to the store and get omega-3 fatty acids or oils to take with one of your meals every day. And we want to, we prefer that you take an omega-3 oil that has DHA in it, which is a specific kind of oil that is necessary for our brains and for our anti-inflammatory activities in our body. So the natural way to fight inflammation is to eat omega-3 oils or uh, marine oils, mainly seafood, or sea, excuse me, fish oil, and DHA and EPA fish oils. So that, that's my suggestion. Um, most Americans have six times as much of the, of the seed and nut oils than they should, and nearly zero omega-3 oils in their diet. We, if you think about it, we cook with uh, corn oil, we cook with um, peanut oil, we cook with other nut oils, uh, sesame seed oils. Uh, all of those are an omega omega six. So we have to balance those with our with our um, dose of of marine oils or uh, fish oil plus DHA. Um, <clears throat> If you think about the fact that we have lost, lost our taste for seafood and have limited it and decreased it over the last hundred years, and we have increased nuts and uh, other complex fats like meat fats or animal fats, that's even worse. But we have basically changed our whole diet. And fast food has a lot of uh, saturated fats in it and also omega-6 fats. So you need to watch how much you eat, decrease the, the fast food, increase the, the fish that you eat. Uh, frying, fried fish kind of takes out all of the benefit of the fish because if you fry it, you're going to fry it in something that is either a poly -unsatur or polysaturated oil like lard, animal fat, um, or you're going to put it in corn oil or peanut oil or some other type of oil that is omega-6. So we have to decrease that and eat fish that's baked, eat fish that's poached, eat fish that is maybe pan-fried but not deep-fried uh, to decrease our, uh, our uh, inflammatory processes. All of the things that age us and break down our tissues are related to inflammatory processes. Now, I don't take care of pregnant people anymore, but when I did, they just started adding uh, fish oil and DHA to uh, the prenatal vitamins. And that was a big leap forward because it's real, those omega-3 oils are really good for babies. It make, that's what our brain is made out of. So if you're making a baby, you need to take in a lot of those oils to build a very healthy brain for your baby. And so the prenatal vitamins that have DHA in it, in them are useful for building a better brain for your babies. So I hope you add omega-3 oils either in supplement form or in eating fish of many types or marine fish uh, in your diet. And I hope that that helps you with any of the aches and pains or any of the, of the uh, side effects of inflammation, which is obesity. It actually helps you lose weight to decrease your inflammation. So Take this to heart and try to be healthier. Go to the health food store or even the grocery store and you'll find omega-3 oils in capsule form and uh, that you can take between two and four of them a day with food, always with food, because they need to have food and digestion to absorb. So make yourself healthier and we'll see you next time. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com 
or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 